Hi, I'm Dan from Bar Events UK. Usually we do giant TPs, metal bars and event staff, but we're not doing that still. So welcome to another episode of Around the World in 80 Drinks. We've got another awesome guest on tonight. He's from Ghana. Uh, his name's Ebenezer. So we'll, uh, we'll play uh, that, that video in a minute. He's not live. Uh, so this is actually live now on YouTube. And I think this is where we're going to put all our videos now. We're going to go live on YouTube. So if you want to watch, please subscribe to that channel. Uh, and then we'll upload the videos on Saturday night uh, onto our Facebook page. So you can watch them there, but it's now live on YouTube. Right, okay. So tonight we're going to be making the sidecar. So not the sidecar, the white lady, which is essentially a twist on the sidecar. Um, so if you know anyone that's interested in drinks, making drinks at home, or watching an, hopefully an entertaining drinks channel, tell them to subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is Bar Events UK. Just search for that and it should come up. Um, if you're watching this on playback, are you not live on YouTube, or you're watching it on Facebook, then please hashtag around the world in 80 drinks. Um, and like I say, just keep tagging people, tell everyone about us, and um, hopefully we'll spread this word far and wide. So we're going across the globe, as you all know, um, and tonight we're in Africa. Okay, so, white lady, get your mixing glass, uh, or mixing tin, it's a gin drink, I'm going to be putting, basically it's going to end up at two shots, like it always does. So I'm putting a shot of half of, of gin in. It's the base spirit, it's the main spirit. And that's a shot and a half. Boatyard gin, an absolutely fantastic gin. We'll tag them in this video. Um, it's a proper martini drink, like I could drink this straight easily. Absolutely banging gin. And then some triple sec or orange liqueur, Cointreau, something like that. Just half a shot and that gets us up to our two shot mark that, like I say, most cocktails have. If you do Google this, the, uh, the ingredients will be, or the measurements will be slightly different. I've just basically simplified it so you can remember them and uh, just be basically making it easier for making cocktails at home. Um, usually it's about 45 mil maybe of, uh, of gin, uh, 20 mil or so of Cointreau. It's, it's a bit more sort of faffy, um, but we're just gonna basically keep it simple to a shot and a half of gin, half shot of Cointreau. And then some lemon. So, as I've said most weeks, lemon contains about 30 mil. So we basically want, we're gonna cut it into quarters. I'm gonna squeeze two quarters in. So it works out to be about 15 mil. So that's around about half a shot if you're pouring it. But there's no harm in working with fresh ingredients when basically you're making a really short drink. Um, so try and keep it short. Oh, but sorry, because it's short and simple, try and keep it fresh and use excellent ingredients because you know there's no masking flavours here. You want to develop flavours, you want to bring out flavours of the gin and that sort of thing. So, so this drink, like I say, is a bit of a twist on a sidecar. We did the sidecar last week. The sidecar is uh, cognac, this is gin. That's the only difference. This does also have egg white in. That, that's the difference too, I guess. So that, they are the only differences. I'm gonna crack this egg. I'm gonna do it over a separate pot, because um, once I did this and I really messed it up, and the uh, egg yolk and the egg white all ended up in the drink. So if you're not as confident, do it over a separate pot, like so. Discard of the egg yolk, and then basically chuck that in the drink. There we go. Um, so this drink, the origin, uh, it's ori well, originally believed to have been created by famous bartender Harry McEl McElhone uh, while he was at London's Ciro Club in 1919. Um, at the time, he used equal parts of, of white creme de menthe, triple sec and lemon, so it wasn't this drink, you know, as we're doing it today. Um, it wasn't until he opened Harry's New York, New York bar in Paris in 1923 that he changed that white creme de menthe to gin, and thank God he did because that is this is such a nicer drink. Um, there's always a bit of controversy and discrepancies over who makes the drinks and when they're created. Um, so the legend, the legend that is Harry Craddock, he wrote the American, uh, he wrote the sorry the the cocktail menu and the book uh, that came from the Savoy. Uh, so he was uh, at the American bar. I know we had a uh, director of bars for the Savoy on before, Declan, so he's basically doing the same job. Um, so Harry Craddock 
made this drink and basically added more gin. Uh, so it makes the drink drier. Um, it's in his book. It's in the cocktail um, book that Savoy published. Um, and, and that's it, really. It's a, it's a, that, that book is a, is a legendary book. It's like a Bible for bartenders. Um, and he, he just basically put more drink in. He probably made a lot more of them as well working at the American bar in the Savoy. Um, so down to volume alone, let's say he created it. Um, the, the measures we're using and, and the ingredients we're using, it, it's like the Harry Craddock style, shall we say. Um, it was another bartender, uh, Peter Dawley. He was, a, he was a legendary former manager of the American bar who suggested adding a dash of egg white to bind the ingredients together and give it a smoother finish. Um, but that, that's pretty much the gist of it. I'm gonna just put in a bit of sugar syrup, not even half a shot, just because there's, um, there's lemon in there. It, I, I'm not a fan of really bitter drinks. You can have it without sugar syrup. I'm just trying to make it a bit of a balanced drink for a balanced taste. Um, but you can add a little bit of sugar syrup or not. Completely up to you, depends how you like it. So, let's get some ice in the drink. Get loads of ice in there, get it nice and cold. Give it a good shake. So, you want to try and get the tin and the glass touching, um, and then you want to hold your hand there when you break it apart later, and you basically hit it at the around the end of your fingers. But I'm just gonna give it a quick shake. There we go. Into a martini glass. Ideally double strain, but I don't have a double strainer here, so that's basically a tea strainer. You can see the creaminess coming out on top. And then as a garnish, I'm just gonna take this edge off the lemon. If you can see here. There we go. And then, I'm just going to trim it up a bit, make it a bit nicer. You can leave it fat if you like. Grab my bar spoon. I'm just going to twist it around the bar spoon over the drink. So the zest that's now spitting out is going over the drink. It adds uh, aromatics, adds a little bit of flavour. So then you're left with a curl of lemon. So there's lemon on the edge of the drink, lemon in the drink. You can sort of expect what you're going to be tasting. And there we have it. A white lady. An absolute time old classic. Cheers. Yes. I love strong gin drinks. Right, okay. So, uh, it's safe to say, like I say, uh, Craddock made a few of these. So, uh, this, is, this is to him, really. Um, according to Joe Gilmore, another former head barman of the Savoy, uh, this white lady was one of Lauren and Hardy's favourite drinks. A star-studded place, that. There you go. Bit of trivia for you. So, like I say, it's essentially a sidecar, but with gin instead of cognac or brandy. And, uh, and it's got an egg white in it. And that's pretty much it. So now you can remember really easily remember two drinks. Right, okay, let's move on anyway. Let's move on to our get next guest. He's uh, in Ghana, Africa. His name's Ebenezer. He's an absolute legend of the industry over there. He's worked in all the best bars that they have. Um, he's got his own business over there. He does brand activations, which basically means uh, companies ask him to launch products and that sort of thing. So let's, uh, let's bring him in. Ebenezer, everyone. Roll VT. Ebenezer, thanks for coming on Around the World in 80 Drinks. How are you doing? I'm doing good, brother. Yourself? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. That is one hell of a home bar. Ah, thank you very much. I mean, that is one of my beautiful bars. I've got a home. Uh, since there is a cocktail at home, I decided to make something beautiful behind the back, my back bar. This is, um, I mean, where we're looking at right now. So if you're looking at me right now, I mean, this is my backyard. This is where I'm making magic. At home. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> I bet you can have some right parties in there. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is, uh, this is trap house, I call it. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So tell us about where you live. You're obviously in Ghana. Whereabouts? Okay. Um, at the moment, I'm in Ghana. I'm in the capital city of Ghana, Accra. And I mean, yeah, basically, here, this is where I am right now. Okay. And what's it been like over there with all this COVID going on? Um, yes, I think uh, COVID is not just Ghana. It's, I mean, it's the whole world. And yeah, every, every country is 
affected. Let me say 90% of most countries are affected with COVID. But I think COVID is something that has come to give it us. So it still doesn't stop us from being behind a bar. We still have to move on. We still have to live with it. And just, I mean, keep moving. Yeah. So did you get locked down like we did? Did all the bars and restaurants close? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think um, probably from March, uh, we had a lockdown. Even until now, we still got lockdown, but um, it's, it's, it's just open for like, uh, I mean, the hospitality is open for just 100 people. And even with these 100 people, they have to come to your venue with safety measures. So um, if you choose to open, that means you need to open with safety measures. That is, um, yeah. you having your nose mask, preparing a hand sanitizer at your venue and all that. And you, you should make sure you keep the social uh, distancing very, very, very careful. Yeah, so, okay. Yeah. So are you managing to get back to work in a relative normality? Um, or are you still, you know, waiting for it to get back to work? No, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I'm still working. I mean, okay. um, even, even when it was, um, I mean, just after when the lockdown was open, we decided to, I mean, start opening because uh, people were willing to come out, you know. And when you when you look into the capacity that I am right now, I mean, when you step out, you even, you won't even think there's COVID in, in the country. People are really going out. People really want to have fun and a whole lot of stuff. So even sometimes when they're trying to limit them, you don't want people to get inside and a whole lot, they start getting pissed, you know. But, I mean, yeah, we're still open. I'm still working both from my office and both from my restaurant. So, yeah. Okay, well, that's good to hear. And is it busy or is it quite quiet? Yeah, uh, compared to no, my, my, my um, restaurant is, is a fine dining restaurant where we really focus more on um, the fine dining food and classic and beautiful cocktails. So um, we, we really get people, we really get numbers of people coming to have dinner I mean, yeah, we really get people to come and have dinner and enjoy beautiful cocktails. But aside that, as in we looking into our lounge where we used to do events and a couple of stuff, uh, we can't do events now because our events are really, really crazy. We expect more than like 500 people in a bed. So, I mean, we can't mm -hmm. do any events for now. But uh, people are really, really coming to have dinner and, I mean, lunch and everything. And is it mostly locals or do you get a lot of tourism around there normally? Um, we've got both um, local, but I think 70% um, of the people who come there are more of like um, the foreigners. So, because um, the food and the standard that we preach to the people is more of like those um, type of people, you know. So, though we've got um, our local dishes and stuff in there, but we really have more of like the clientele over the local people. Okay, right. Yeah. So um, you're making a cocktail for us today. Do you want to talk us through it? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So um, let me tell you something about this particular cocktail that I'm about to make. Guys, look, that is one of the cocktails that I so dear to my heart. And it, it, it's called Tiki Twist. So I gave it this name because it, it, I got the inspiration from the Tiki culture and how um, the Caribbeans are really trying to I mean, uh, blend their cocktails with food and, you know, their rums and all these things. So I got that inspiration from the Tiki culture. Then I decided to create something more African from the Tiki culture. So it, it, it's a kind of like African blend, but it has um, more of like the tropical ingredients combined with uh, African ingredients, which is very, very, very delicious. Now... Um, I'll tell you something about this cocktail. It has a beautiful story that even if I have to start saying it right now, oh my God, I'm, I don't think I'm going to finish right now because we have less time. But look, this is one of the cocktails that I will tell you, it made me the best tip in my whole life being behind a bar. And funny enough, I didn't even get a tip from a guy. It was even from a lady, you understand. And I think I just blew her mind because when she said, look, I just wanted you to make me something special, then I decided to ask her, okay, what is your favorite uh, fruit? What is your favorite spirit? How do you like it? You like it sweet? You like it sour? Do you like it strong? So I got all the information from her and I decided to make her something because she said, okay, they are from Fran France, so that means they are French people. And um, part of one of the girls who was from like Caribbean, like um, Caribbean. So 
I, I decided to make something tropical for her. And funny enough, I decided to add passion fruit, and it was one of her favorite fruits. You understand? So I had to blend that with rum and make that particular cocktail for them. And they really enjoyed it to give me the biggest tip I've ever had <laughs> on a particular night from a customer, which is $500 a night. Like, wow. it was so crazy to have that from a lady. So that should tell you that whatever I'm about to make in here right now, it's something that um, it's something somehow going to be something that maybe you might find it difficult to get if only you have a lemongrass. But I think lemongrass is really growing, I mean, everywhere, mostly like most of the countries in the world. So yeah. it, is, it is something that, I mean, you should look into trying to put this recipe or trying to try this recipe and just have a taste of it and just see how it tastes. You know, so I'm probably going to start. So first of all, my shaker, definitely. <laughs> so I'm going to pick some fresh fruits. I love, I love using fresh ingredients. Like I, I hardly use uh, chemicalized ingredients. So I just had some few slices of pineapple. So I'm going to put it in there. Yeah, I think that's enough. Then I'm going to add, I made this particular syrup. So there is lemongrass and ginger syrup. I made it at home. It's just, I mean, your, your usual simple syrup that you make, but I added um, like 0.2 grams of lemongrass leaf, and I added some grams of ginger as well, fresh ginger, boiled it together, and I got lemon and, lemon and lemongrass and ginger syrup. So I'm probably going to put 25 ml of that. So I'm going to model that. And when I decided to make this particular cocktail, it was, I really also got one inspiration from we Africans because I realized that we Africans really love our sweet and spicy kind of cocktails. So when I thought of doing something with lemongrass, and I tasted lemongrass with pineapple and ginger, and it was so amazing. So I decided to, I mean, look into what other fruits that I need to pair with lemongrass to give it that awesome flavor as well. So then I went for this beautiful man here, passion fruit. <laughs> so I'm just going to use a half cup of passion fruit. All right. Then I'm going to add 50 ml of um, Bacardi Catablanca, which is the white rum. <clears throat> and I made um, a lemongrass iced tea, which is um, cold iced tea, so I'm going to put 50 ml of that as well. Then we had our 25 ml of lemon juice. Then we're going to shake. So this is one of the simple cocktails that you can actually try at home. Very, very simple ingredients to get. Can you look at that? Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to double screen into our glass. So does lemongrass grow quite locally to you? Exactly. This is so, so refreshing with beautiful flavors. Like, I would really, really want you guys to try this. And you're yeah, really, really going to enjoy this. You're really, really going to enjoy this, trust me. You, you can actually get a fresh um, foamy on top of the cocktail. 
which is not anything by just getting that from the pineapple, yeah. fresh pineapple. And this really looks very, very, very refreshing. Amazing to have this hot afternoon, or uh, probably in the night when you're done from work. You go home, you really want to take something refreshing before you go, you go for any type of meal. And one thing is, I know my, my country people, they really love, um, they are more of like health conscious. So when I decided to add um, lemongrass to it, it was a way to also introduce um, some kind of way to upsell uh, cocktails in our country in a different way. Because I understood that as, as health conscious they are, if you're trying to, before when you're trying to pitch cocktails to them, they're like, oh no, like no, just give me something straight. But when you try to explain to them now, like, look, this is beautiful. This is with this fruit. This is with this. And it has lemongrass, which is very good for your health and blah, blah, blah. Then they're like, oh, let me try that. So I realized that these people are more of like health conscious. So it's better I utilize my own homegrown ingredients in making cocktails that makes it more unique in style than trying to stick to, I mean, what we want to know as like our classics and stuff. So I'm going to garnish with some... Um, um, Sorry, that's my dog. Yeah. <laughs> then I'm gonna put some slice of passion fruit on top, and a straw beside it. And look at how perfect that is. Absolutely stunning. Look how beautiful that is. I love it. How does it taste? I wish you could see this during daytime. You're gonna see how green. And how refreshing this looks like, man! You gotta, you gotta try this. <laughs> I you wish really I could. Good. Cheers to that. <laughs> yeah, cheers, bro. So, tell us how you made the uh, iced tea with lemongrass. Okay, all right. So, um, I got um, some grams of lemongrass, fresh lemongrass from the farm. So I boiled it. So I used two grams over two cups, and I boiled it until it turned green. Then I, I strained, I double strained it and I got the tea itself. I kept it, um, I kept it in the fridge to, I mean, to really get it cold. Then I, I used it. Okay. So I've got nothing in there. I didn't put anything. It's just fresh, the lemongrass um, boiled and I mean, I just got the lemongrass juice. Yeah, okay, amazing. And yeah. your sh um, syrup with rhubarb, oh, sorry, not rhubarb, ginger, yeah. um, is there much yeah. sugar in that? Yeah, yeah, so it's, it's actually um, the same way you're making a simple syrup. Yeah. Yeah, but I added the lemongrass leaves to it. And after that boiled for a while, I, I, I blended a ginger, um, fresh ginger. I blended it and I added it to the, um, to the syrup to boil. Okay. So just after the lemongrass was done boiling with the sugar, I took the leaves off and I added the ginger, fresh ginger puree into it. And I allowed it to boil for a while. Then I double strain it to take the chance of, I mean, um, to take the chance of so I can really get the fine liquid. Yeah. And that is how okay. I come about my too. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Yeah, I'm definitely going to try that. It looks absolutely amazing. Yeah, so you should, you should. You, you're you're quite experienced. I'm so much in love with that. <laughs> <laughs> You've got loads of experience, haven't you? You've worked in the best bars in Ghana and now you do um, brand activations and that sort of thing, don't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. So um, I've probably opened my own consultancy um, company for the hospitality, and I'm working with um, Diageo um, in Ghana. I mean, with the skin is Ghana, um, and I'm still working with the Viva and Grow, which is uh, I am the head manager, at bar manager at the uh, the Viva and Grow. So I'm still working with the Diageo. I'm still working with Skinless Ghana, which is Diageo. And I'm still focusing on my consultancy company as well. Oh, you're a busy guy. <laughs> I have to, because there's a whole lot of stuff that I really want to change in the industry. So I really need to, I mean, combine a whole lot. Until I'm satisfied, I'll just have to focus on one or two. Fair enough. Well, uh, good luck with it all. Look, we've, we've richly flown, flown through that. It's 15 minutes already. So um, ah. I'm, we're, we're going to have to say goodbye, <laughs> unfortunately. We'll, we'll get oh, all the tags God. to the companies that you work for, the bars and that sort of thing. Uh, I'll get them off your messenger and we'll put them on the post. 
Um, yeah. But everyone, like, this has been Ebenezer. What a legend. Thank you. Thank you very much, bro, for also having me on this beautiful platform. It's, it's so amazing. I mean, I can't, I can't wait to see the video out, share it to my lovely people in Africa for them to see how cocktail is being appreciated around the world. So thank you guys for having me here as well. I really appreciate this platform. Absolute pleasure. Hopefully we'll meet one day. Sure, sure, definitely, definitely. <laughs> after uh, this, after this Corona season, we're definitely gonna meet. We're definitely <laughs> gonna meet. Awesome. Well, have a good evening, and thanks for coming on, Ebenezer, everyone. What an absolute legend of the industry right there. And I can't believe we've, we've got people interested in Africa. Hopefully we can get a few more countries across that c continent interested. Um, but I want you to tell us where you want us to go. So tag us in these, in these comments or, or you know comment on YouTube and comment on Facebook and say where in the world you want to see. And we'll try and get a bar or bartender from that place. Also, let us know what drinks you want to learn to make or any spirits you want to know how to use. We, we need your inspiration to help us make these shows. So please tell us where do you want us to go and what do you want us to make? And we'll try and get there and we'll try and make it. Just want to big up again, Boatyard Gin. I absolutely love it. Please do try and find a bottle. Um, probably not in your local supermarket. You might have to order it specialist, um, but we'll, we'll put tags on here anyway so you can find it. That's a white lady. I hope you all enjoy it. I'm Dan Lakin. This is Around the World Nate Drinks and I am done.